Now, earlier on in the programme, we met Richard here, who is our punter for this week, and who's looking for an executive car, but with a bit of a twist. Mm. It's company car money. Yeah. Lucky you. So you're coming out of the car, you're spending their money, so you're not too worried about depreciation. No. But running costs are an issue, mm. hence your idea of converting the Merc, the first car, to LPG, yeah. which makes it a bit different. Well, the next car is one that converting to LPG won't be necessary for, but it does come from a manufacturer with a reputation for building seriously long-lived, seriously safe cars. And Ian Royal has got the lowdown on it. To many people, Volvo are one of the more mature choices for an executive saloon, but will the Volvo S60 be a bit too mature and, dare I say, bland for Richard? And it's what's under here that's most important. As you can see, it's one of Volvo's very smart, very new engines. It's a two-litre unit, but it's what's down there that's most important, the turbocharger, because that provides plenty of poke. And we can spend a bit more time looking under here because the boot doesn't matter quite so much. Whoa, look at that. I mean, it's typical, isn't it? The one car that you would think would be an ideal candidate for LPG conversion doesn't need it. I mean, it's huge in the boot on the S60. You can get three or four LPG tanks in there, but with this car, you don't need it. Now, I think Richard is gonna really like this Volvo S60 because this is one smart, stylish car. I mean, just look at the interior and the dashboard. It's all beautifully sculptured and presented. I mean, things like the cup holders, very nice. And well, there's another one under there too, with an ashtray there. It's got climate control as standard, quality stereo system, lots of cubby holes, good glove box, and the seats, very, very comfortable. Because I most certainly am. I mean, it's very stylish. It certainly looks the part. It's got a good engine and the turbocharger, plenty of horsepower under the bonnet. It's the baby brother of the S80 which is nearly as good as BMW's 5 Series, the benchmark for executive saloons, so this is going to be good to drive on the road too. You may think that it harks back to the sort of company car scheme that you want so desperately to get out of, and that this car doesn't quite have the badge and image that you're looking for. I think this is one cracking, classy car. But will you do, Richard? Here's your chance to drive it. a lot smaller compared with the Mercedes that we've just driven. Um, having said that, in truth, it is quite a sizeable car. We are talking about something of Mondeo dimensions, so uh, certainly I think it's big enough for my purpose. I certainly don't think that I would have any qualms about uh, the performance in this vehicle, even though it's, it, it is the smallest of the three vehicles here. Overall, I get the impression this car isn't really firing you up with enthusiasm? It's a little bit too much like having another company car. I could probably have stayed in the company scheme and had something very similar to this. Are we being too sensible for you here? I think this vehicle probably does have an element of the hooligan about it. With that turbocharger, it can certainly shift, but it's perhaps uh, a bit of a, a wolf dressed up as a sheep. <laughs> 